What's going on? Movie Mouse here back in City Skylines, the town of Plainville and uh, Plainville Plus technically now. With uh, a return to Plainville comes all the DLCs that we added in over uh, the, the month of January. And uh, I wanted to come back and, well, first start with one that we did not add into this city, and that was Snowfall and the Trams. Did that in its own separate series, or not separate series, separate episode on Snowfall using my Season 5 map Winterfell. I did a bit of work here on this divided highway, or I, that's what I keep calling it. Um, essentially, um, I've taken the, the two-lane one-way streets, the grass lines so that there's no parking, done very occasional intersections, and, uh, and kind of called that a, a highway that supports this outer belt. As you can see from the zoom in there, though, I've added in uh, some tram lines, and it was a long, painstaking process, and it's not finished yet. There's still uh, some bends like this that I would like to smooth out where I can. Uh, but the challenge behind this is finding straight enough segments and just enough space between those roads to enable a tram track in the middle. Now on console and without move it, it's not necessarily the easiest proposition. You could probably make the roads a little closer than I've done here. But as the road starts to bend, having a crossroad with an intersection any smaller than this makes it next to impossible um, to get any kind of snap or a road to recognize that it should be there between two closer nodes. So I recommend this spacing specifically. I'm gonna cut to a bit of the build that I did on the very first block, um, but really I'm gonna kind of talk over more of a, a sped up time lapse, if you will, um, of this process because it it honestly it took me forever to do this one uh, stretch of road. Let's let's uh, take a quick uh, a quick flyover first, and then we'll take a look into uh, some of the deeper details of how this was built. Starting way over here by the highway, um, we've got the tram depot. There is a very small segment of tram road before uh, tram only road is introduced here. So this can be pedestrian traffic and trams, but no cars or trucks can travel on that road. There's a loop here at the very end. Let me throw it on three times speed so that things get moving so that those trams can turn back around and feed into the line. Now, if this looks a little wider than you remember, uh, it, it is true. I had to uh, gut uh, quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of the town uh, along this road to widen both segments. I tried to keep the road uh, on the right here in kind of the same spot, but I did uh, you know move a lot of stuff out in the process. So essentially, this this road acts as again a highway. It's uh, one way streets. The uh, cross streets that you see here are also uh, alternating one way. So one will go uh, north or south, if you will, uh, and then the uh, the next one will be the opposite. And they keep alternating back and forth to reduce some of the traffic at these uh, cross streets. Again, you can see that they occur uh, very infrequently. And sometimes they're like this. They're just turnarounds. Is that one supposed to be? Is that one supposed to be an ingress point into the neighborhood? I think that it might be. I will, we'll keep an eye on traffic. It's not important. Um, so, yeah. So, and again, you can see it gets a little lumpy over here. That's all right. We can fill this in with some trees. I haven't really done any decorating, uh, but this is all about introducing another uh, new line of transport. Definitely one of my favorites. I like the look of it. Uh, similar in uh, in maintenance in some ways to the trolley buses, but the trolley buses don't have an option of having their own dedicated road on console. Trams do, which is really nice. Um, I've got some traffic backing up, coming off the highway, it looks like. I set it to use day-night cycle, so let's take a quick uh, break here and take a look uh, at Plainville at night, or Plainville Plus now. I wonder, the name doesn't really apply anymore now that we've added all the DLC in, now it doesn't. Um, I, surprise, surprise, I, I couldn't stick with a concept and ended up deviating from the plan. Uh, those of you who have been here a while should be used to that concept. But I'm really liking Plainville. I think in, it has some weird quirks uh, right now because uh, it's been kind of bolted on in various sections. Uh, there's our, our new tram road. I love it. I love it. Oh, I wish it w would continue following that. That would be nice. Maybe we should do an actual uh, 
uh, camera follow of uh, the tram network. That might make more sense, right? That's what we're here to talk about. And we want to see it at night. So uh, what did I do here at the end? This is worth showing real quick. So let's go into the, where is it? Tram roads. Does it really matter as long as I get an underground view? I just have a, a, a big roundabout basically down here and it doesn't have to connect. Not too fancy. As you can see, let's play it. Uh, trams will make pretty sharp, in that case, a basically a 90 degree turn. Um, really, that's three times speed? That's how fast that thing goes? That seems slow to me. All right, let's uh, let's do this. Let's wait for it to come out. And let's uh, let's follow it down the strip here. So we're following. We're playing. We're in cinematic mode. There we go. And let's go right one time speed. That's fast enough. I, I like how these intersections uh, feel like they feel busier because you're kind of forcing the traffic to only cross from one side to the other every so often. Uh, so it helps traffic on this road keep moving, but it also helps the intersections feel nice and busy because you see lots of pedestrian traffic. You see the trams, the cars cutting through. It feels more alive and you'll notice kind of these dead zones in between on these strips, especially because of the grass line streets not having parking lanes. It's the same with uh, tram streets. Remove the parking lanes to make uh, extra room for the trams. You know, they, they have a tendency to make the city feel a little less alive. And I think, uh, again, having these intersections kind of set up like this uh, means that, uh, you know, it just, it, I don't know. I really, I like to, I really like the feel of this. I wish I'd done uh, something like this sooner. I'll, uh, I'll move the camera around a little bit. I would like to trim down our, our downtown area is just a little too big. There's too much of it. Um, I mean, it doesn't. It's not terrible, but it's not right. Sorry, I'll, I'll stop bouncing the camera around like that. Probably a, a perfectly enjoyable view of the city that I'm ruining. I'm, I'm supposed to just let this play at normal speed and put music on, and stop talking like the other creators. But, but this is what you get, jerky camera movements here. So thanks for tuning in and subscribing for that. You are subscribed, aren't you? If not, hey, that button's down there and it's free. So uh, come back and check out more of this. I'm really a fan of the tram. Like I said, I like the look of the trolley bus. I like the look of the tram. Uh, tram is three times more efficient at moving people around because it can hold 90 people per vehicle, for, for vehicle per vehicle, instead of uh, just the 30 of the buses. So combined with this approach and running over pedestrians like that, I think it's a winning deal for, uh, for transport. Metro could do just as well, obviously, and, and do it arguably a little bit better, but not with the same fashion. Uh, but then again, I guess we could have gone overground metro and it, it would have been very similar. But squeezing the stations in, you know, is a much larger asset where uh, the, the trolley stop, the trolley stops, the tram stops are basically just a signpost and it tells people to wait here. You can see right there above the uh, middle car. That's that's the, the tram stop. Uh, so down here, this road on the right hand side of the motion was on flat ground. I, I made a bit of a divot here raised that road just enough so that I had the ability to turn a tram around here. I did have the tram turn around immediately across the street from the tram station and it totally glitched out the tram lines. The trams would go all the way down to the end of the strip, come all the way back and go back into the station and not pick up a single passenger. Um, as soon as I moved the turnaround closer down the line, it fixed it. So there's some weird glitch there uh, that I'm sure is unintended behavior. Um, I theoretically didn't change anything about the capabilities of the vehicles to move around the network. Uh, just the fact that that turnaround was just as close as the tram station. And technically, I guess the tram station was closer because it was making a right instead of a left. It, some, the game wasn't calculating it correctly, so I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, let's go talk about the build a bit, though. So what I did with these roads, and forgive the awkward segue into... Uh, uh, build footage here, but what I did uh, with these roads was, you know, let, let's start, you know, kind of at the park with a, a simple straight stretch of road, um, two lane roads, and and these are again specifically the two lane one way grass line streets. I do upgrade if you see me using other roads, I'll I'll upgrade that um, later on. But from a straight segment of road, 
if we connect out six units and remember the, the big line at 10 units, that appears when you go to five units. So it's just beyond one click beyond the zoning that uh, stretches back from the road. But if you go six units away, that gives you just enough space that there's an actual snappable point on console when you're using snapping. Uh, you might be able to make this a little bit tighter without snapping, but it is super inconsistent. And especially when you're cornering or rounding off um, both roads on either side of that central tram road, it makes it really, really tough. So I would recommend this separation if you're going for something like this, um, a divided strip like this, again, six units, go to the next intersection, separate that six units, and then connect the roads as straight as you can. Even if they're consistently curved paths, then that's totally fine. Straight segments are great and they're easy, um, but even if they're consistently curved paths, they'll work, but don't you know, connect a bunch of road a bunch of road in the bottom and then plan to draw through the middle the uh, the tram network to make sure that things are snapping correctly i recommend going a block at a time uh, in this particular sort of build scenario so go from intersection to intersection and build both roads and the tram network before you work on the next segment of roads because you'll run into some really frustrating snapping issues and end up you know bulldozing and breaking uh, a bunch of it I did a little bit of uh, landscaping here or there where I could and just kind of smooth some of the bumps out, but uh, there are a, a few blocks that are just really rigid and bumpy um, just because of how the game handles. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why it does what it does, but uh, for the most part, it it's a pretty smooth, uh, a pretty smooth trip. Uh, we can plant some, uh, some trees, some shrubs, maybe even some uh, park objects and, uh, and kind of get those uh, moving along, uh, moving along this path to fill up some of that space. While we're on that topic, some of the small uh, park objects that you can access uh, might be kind of cool to add uh, some life to this area. I dropped in a, uh, a park gate right here just to define this officially as a park. Um, we could probably find a, a better spot to tuck that away out of sight. But you know, little things, in fact, Little things like this, um, again, can kind of make uh, this city feel a little more alive at a quick glance. You know, just some some activity, some food trucks happening on a busy corner. Where I've got a rougher segment of road, another thing that you might consider is using some of the park tiles. So at the, uh, the end of some of the park objects, of course, if you have Park Life DLC, um, over here near in the city park, um, near the... Uh, kind of in the middle of the props is uh, basically called park tiles. And you can take something like this and kind of get it right up the edge of, of what you want to do. And then it will kind of snap. Uh, this is obviously a lot easier on uh, straight segments. So we can have this kind of come in and fill all the way down here. And, you know, personally, I, I could go either way. It's not going to let me Okay, we'll fill that in with some props or something. But that's got another different look, you know, for that particular segment where, where things again get a little bit rough. Maybe you can cover it up with something like a park tile. Maybe just fill it in with some random trees. You never know what might work. Uh, give it a try and uh, and see what works. See what you like. Stylistically, I, I don't think the big trees are a fit here for me. But if we were to do something like that on either side, you know, have some random trees or... I guess seemingly random, just me kind of flicking through the, the list of trees and plopping them one by one. Uh, but you can do some interesting things to, to kind of change up the look. I might do something like this on uh, around the transport hub, maybe. That might be kind of cool. But I think for right now, we'll stick with the uh, the open grass. I kind of like the feel of it. But, uh, but we'll see where we land in the long term. Today was all about the function of uh, this tram line and basically how to build it. The, the trick is to just reserve yourself enough space. If you're on PC, grab that move it mod. It is worth it. But then again, I guess if you're on PC and grabbed it as part of uh, Game Pass, then, uh, then you don't have mods, <laughs> which is an unfortunate thing about some of the other stores. Steam definitely wins out on the workshop front for games that support it. There's you know a huge community built right into the the, uh, the game launch experience, basically. 
But that's not why a lot of you are here. A lot of you are here because of just plain Jane Vanilla City Skylines. Uh, and for the most part, that's what we're talking about here. We did add, uh, again, the DLC back in for this one. But, uh, you know, as middle of the road I am on Snowfall, part of that I think being the fact that it is freezing here right now and I have to deal with snow in real life, so I don't want to deal with it in a game too. Uh, maybe for those of you in warmer climates, uh, may uh, may not mind so much, or it may be a welcome addition and a change of uh, scenery. Um, it does look beautiful in game and in real life, but it's uh, it's not my favorite DLC. I've I've only built one uh, serious snow map so far. Uh, maybe it's time for another one, but uh, by far the the coolest thing that you can bring in uh, with Snowfall is these trams. So. This has been running for a while. Let's go into transport services. Let's let's kind of look at transport for our city. Before we dive into trams, let's just talk about where transport is at. So we're at 50,000 population. We've got uh, a sort of, tr there's, there's a couple transport hubs, I should say. Uh, this was our first one. This is a bus station with a metro station right across the street. And that uh, we also have a park cheesing some money out of the people as they walk back and forth. They're paying us money to do so, to swap between uh, bus and uh, metro now the bus lines are not that great they kind of get around some of the random areas some of the residential spots uh, the metro is really where it's at so from this hub station you can connect out this way and this continues on to industry but the more important part is it connects to this station which is the uh, metro train and monorail hub uh, train connects in from the outside world so a way to get people in don't mind this i've been messing around i mean i guess technically it's better because it's not backed up all the way to that highway but this is not pretty this is something that we need to work on part of that is mass transit so uh bear with me well the sun sets i'm gonna try and rush and we can get some more cinematic flyby of the city um so this monorail comes up and basically services this main strip through our downtown it also continues all the way through this strip. I know this may be a little silly to look at in the sunset, but it'll be even easier to understand in a moment. Uh, and it just kind of runs into a dead end all the way down here uh, at the end of this. Uh, this is also where trolley buses intersect with Metro and over here, not too far, um, is where our tram network picks up. And that handles all the traffic along that central avenue that runs you can kind of see where that, that the clear grass clearing is. I'll, I'll kind of pan over it. But again, very occasional intersections. Just making use of that tram really to get people up and down. Um, but again, back into transport views. So buses are doing a bit to move people around. We've also got uh, a trolley bus, which is our purple line over here. We'll skip tram just for one second to see, you know, we're moving a decent amount of uh, passengers around the Metro. I think I started to review the other place that the Metro goes is over to our stadium area and over to our Metropolitan Airport. That's a couple lines that uh, connect in there. We've also got helicopters. We've got hot air balloon tours. We've got a lot of stuff happening on the map. There are no train lines, shipping ferries or anything like that. Um, two monorail lines. What are our two monorail lines? Oh, that's right. We have a monorail line that comes over here to the parks. I forgot about that. We haven't seen this one at night. Oh my goodness. Hold on a second. Camera rotation sensitivity. Turn that all the way down. Camera panning sensitivity. Turn that all the way down. Should we pan the other way so that we can see the city? pop into the background here as we come around so this is our amusement park it's it's pretty well packed in there i think we could do a little bit more decoration and, and moving of things around to make it feel a little bit more of the part but but i like that one let's see what it looks like with our our city in the background as we uh slowly but surely pan over the zoo Ooh. Look at that. Look at the, you know, the difference in the lights between the zoo and the amusement park. Like you can see that separation of areas. 
and then we've got the hot air balloon cruising through the hot air balloons like okay i'm sorry hold on a second i'm and i'm going very slowly because of what i just did to my my camera settings some of you that get motion sick should probably probably prefer that i run these settings the hot air balloons actually actually burst the flames they lit up pretty nicely there that's a nice little touch show us again come on there you go okay i don't know if that was worth it but uh <laughs> let's take one more uh slow flyby over our new strip here I think this tram, you know, does it does a, a really nice look. Um, you know, is it a little mechanical? Is it a little? I don't know. Is it a little rigid? Maybe. At least it is between blocks. But then, you know, it it kind of curves around here or there. It and it really separates out this coastal area. Sorry for the the zooms. I can't slow the change the speed on. Well, I guess you can. You could pull the trigger a little softer. Um, you know, we've got to look at traffic, where it's tying into that road, maybe make a couple more intersections here or there. Uh, the important thing, the, the cool thing about this, where do I have here? Nope, that one's a cross street. I was trying to look for a spot where, you know, you can have, I wonder if I did away with all these when I remodeled the road. You could have an intersection that only ties into one side. So you don't necessarily have to make a, a four way intersection as it were over here. Right, we don't have to have that cross street, so it could be a three-way interchange to keep things moving. But all in all, I'm really happy. So let's let's that cinematic camera. Let's look at the actual numbers now for tram since we talked about everything else. This tram line is moving 457 passengers up and down this strip. Now this is uh, a commercial strip that divides a couple different residential areas, so it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I mean, we've got Metro running all over our city and no one line is doing, you know, it's doing, what, what's our Metro line for? Which one's this one? It's the Metro yellow line. Which one is that? It goes out this way. Where does that go? That goes to the hub station. So hub to hub is what our most popular metro line to get people moving around. Uh, but it does nothing in comparison to how many people we have uh, taking that one uh, blinking orange line at the bottom of the screen here. That's where the, the bulk of our people are traveling. Now it is a long line, but it's obviously very efficient. And uh, I think I mentioned it before, one of the nice things about the trams is unlike buses and trolley buses, which support uh, 30 people these support 90 people uh, and when I initially turned the line on it was it was pretty crazy it was backed up pretty bad uh, you can go and inspect on a line I didn't learn about this for a while you can actually go down um, and select a specific uh, tram if you want to go follow it but you can also look at how many people are waiting at each stop and at first there were more people waiting at a stop than could possibly get on any tram, but it settles down uh, quite a bit. In this case, I went to uh, 100. I think it started at more than that. I bet we could go down to 75, no problem, remove a couple vehicles from this line. Um, I think make it cheaper in the process, but also make it so that, you know, we're not doing as many wasted trips. Um, and arguably that may even help traffic because that's less trams that might possibly be intersecting uh, at these cross streets, so if uh, if we've got enough to move the people that we have uh, demand for, then we may as well do that. Let's look at traffic real quick. It is not great. It is 78%, uh, but this, honestly, how bad is this over here? It, it says it's bad, but it really isn't. Um, that, you know, look at this part of the city. This is basically what, what I just redid. We'll be gutting this back a bit, so this won't be um, as tall. Let me change my my options back up. So that I can move around a little quicker when I need to. Is that too much? Let's go down one. Let's see. It's fast enough when it needs to be. Okay. So we'll start looking at traffic. Some of that will improve just by backing down the number of people and businesses that are in here. Uh, but this might be one of our next major projects is seeing how we can cut back 
some of the traffic coming into this area because the more we reduce what's happening here, that will reduce all the stress that's happening on this roundabout, which is very poorly designed. Don't 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 judge the, the channel on on that intersection alone, please. Uh, but you can see it's causing backup way back here. Um, I did some funky things to just fix real quick to get that back up off of this highway, which is how far back it was. Um, so I made a much longer exit ramp. It is two lanes. It's slop. It is confusing. Um, but uh, but again, got the backup off that highway. Well, today, though, is not about that traffic. Today is about those trams. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got some inspiration or ideas for your city. And uh, let me know what you want to see more of next. I think we're going to do, you know, I, I want to tear apart parts of the city and really focus on one topic. The uh, Let's Plays tend to be very stream of consciousness and, and what needs to be addressed right now and just kind of going through the motions. But I think what I'm going to do over the next couple episodes is really focus on a particular topic, hopefully give you some ideas and dive into topics like hopefully you got for the tram today. I think we may look at buses at some point, but I think I want to do a monorail or metro overhaul next and see if we can get that happening as efficiently as possible. I want to give people options for how to move around the city before I start uh, restricting their ability to move around with things like uh, Old Town policy uh, and things like that. So uh, that's one of the ways we're going to solve some of our traffic problems is just by forcing people off the roads. But we want to make sure that our zones are set up right, our access is correct, so we're not cutting off any businesses uh, in the process. Part of that's going to be uh, highway access for things like trucks, maybe even, uh, do we have a big fire in the background there? Wait, hold on a second. Of course, of course we wouldn't, you didn't think we were getting out of here without a fire, did you? It doesn't matter if we change the format of the episodes, the, the same problems are always going to happen. Um, nice to see things are consistent here, but, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed. I was in the middle of an outro, right? Um, Trams, that was fun. Likes, comments, shares, they all help the channel a lot and they're all greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and check back for updates in this and other series. We'll be doing some deep dive into some different concepts. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see, a kind of breakdown of uh, now that we're through kind of the, the DLC and, and what some of those add-ons provide. Um, you know, let's... Let's really deep dive into one of those particular mechanics, say like like transport options or mass transit roads and and really overhaul the city bit by bit. Check back Wednesdays and Saturdays for brand new videos. But until the next one, this is Move the Mouse signing off.